This right here is a real world example of a blockchain transaction where a developer made over $12,000 in profit instantly. How you might ask? With something called MEV. All right, you might have heard of minor extractable value or maximal extractable value, but how does that actually work and how can you make money with it? Well, I'm gonna explain all of that in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works with this technology on a daily basis, including coding my own MEV bots. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you wanna become, then definitely smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. You're gonna be seeing a lot more knowledge bombs just like this one. And if you wanna get the high value skills to do this step by step, then I can show you exactly how to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's get into the basics. What is MEV? So you might have heard of this, it's called minor extractable value or maximal extractable value, which basically refers to the maximum value that can be extracted from block production in excess of the standard block reward and gas fees by including, excluding, and changing the order of transactions in a block, which basically means that anytime that someone's trying to submit a transaction to the blockchain right here, there are you know validators or miners, depending on whatever the consensus algorithm is of the blockchain who are running the architecture, and they can see whatever's coming in and they can basically adjust some parameters to make money off of this. Now that's the textbook definition, but the actual definition of MEV is a lot more broad than that in my opinion. And I like to think about it like this, you know, inside of a blockchain, there's this entire financial ecosystem that includes things like DeFi apps, like trading, like Uniswap and SushiSwap, decentralized exchanges, or lending markets like Compound and Aave, and then all these cryptocurrencies spread across here. And there's potential energy in this system or potential profit, I should say, that can be extracted as a developer. And you don't even have to be a miner or a validator in order to take advantage of those types of things. And now I'll explain the difference in these types of things as we talk about the top ways. But let's first talk about why MEV is such a polarizing topic. Well, that's because there's some MEV that's considered you know, bad by many people's standards because it causes other people to lose money who weren't expecting to, okay? So for this reason, there's a lot of ethical concerns about MEV, whether it's a good thing, whether it's a bad thing. In my opinion, there's some MEV that's totally legit, totally ethical, and some that's much more of a gray area and some that's like totally, you know, probably not so good. And I'll make that clear through all these top methods, which I'm gonna talk about right now. All right, so the first way to make money with MEV is through DEX arbitrage. This is by far one of the most popular ways. So essentially we have different decentralized exchanges powered by smart contracts on the blockchain and lots of cryptocurrency that are parked in those exchanges, okay? And cryptocurrencies are very volatile in price and whenever prices move quickly, these exchanges fall to sync and that presents an arbitrage opportunity. So basically this is where you can buy cryptocurrency on one exchange, all right? And then you can sell it on another exchange for a profit. Let's say that you could buy a token for $100 and then sell it on an exchange for $101. That's $1 profit. Now, if you do that with multiple units of the cryptocurrency, that's $100 profit. Or if you did it over and over and over again, you could also rack up a profit that way. So how is this considered MEV? Well, you don't actually have to be a miner in order to do this. All you have to do is be a developer who can create smart contracts and then can actually borrow this money yourself with something called flash loans, okay? That's essentially where you can... Uh, borrow millions of dollars of cryptocurrency with zero money down as long as you pay it back in the same transaction. So as long as there are two exchanges with enough of price discrepancy where you can make an arbitrage, including the gas fees, then you can just borrow the money, which means that the value is extractable. It's there on the blockchain. You just have to take advantage of it. You don't actually have to be a validator. And that's why I've expanded the definition from just talking about reordering transactions because you're not reordering any transactions in this case. Now, in terms of the ethical implications of this, I don't see anything wrong with this because basically cryptocurrencies are fluctuating all the time, exchanges fall to sync, and you're actually providing a service which is bringing these markets to efficiency and that these prices are more in line with one another. All right, so let's talk about way number two, which is through DeFi liquidations. So what is that? Well, again, inside of our DeFi ecosystem, we have all these different things called lending markets, which you can see here uh, with cryptocurrencies inside of them. So what do they do? Well, this is a website called Compound Finance, which basically lets you deposit cryptocurrency and then also borrow cryptocurrency. It works kind of like a bank. So the whole idea here is if you're going to take out a loan, you actually have to deposit some cryptocurrency as collateral. OK, and the problem is if for some reason, if your loan becomes delinquent in any way, then you can face liquidation. So why is that? Well, essentially, these protocols have something called a collateralization factor, which basically is the amount of cryptocurrency you have to have parked into the application when you're borrowing. And if you accrue too much interest or the prices fall out of sync, or there's lots of different ways which you could uh, exceed that collateralization factor. But if you do, the protocol wants to recoup the money. And they do this in a decentralized way where basically anybody can help repay that lost money for a fee. And so as a developer, you can create bots that will essentially take out flash loans 
in order to help, you know, pay back these delinquent loans or recoup some of those losses, I should say. And then you can earn money for doing that. So that's, you know, money that's just sitting waiting to be made on the blockchain where you don't really have to have any money in order to get it. And that's why I consider it MEV. And this is a case where you can be a developer and do this and you don't have to be a miner or a validator or anything in order to capitalize off this opportunity. Now, in terms of the ethical nature of this, I do think this is a completely ethical thing because there's rules around lending, okay? And when people take out loans and don't pay them back, you know, they're violating a contract in this case. So it is ethical, but, you know, the people are essentially losing money on these types of liquidations. And it can be a type of a gray area if these things get manipulated to force liquidations. So definitely consider that when you're thinking about whether or not this is a good idea for you. All right, so the next way to make money with MEV is to what's called front running, okay? So basically, this is the idea where you look at what someone else is going to do on the blockchain, where they're potentially going to make money in a transaction, and then you get ahead of them and do that transaction before they do. So how does that work? Well, let's look at a basic use case of NFT trading. Let's say that you wanted to buy an NFT and sell it in the same transaction where you could obviously make a profit for doing this. And then you submit that transaction to the blockchain. Well, before it actually gets included into a block. It goes in this place called the mempool, okay? That's just the temporary place that all the transactions that are pending stay until the validators or miners, whatever, process them and include them into a block. Now, the mempool is completely visible, so really anybody can look at the pending transactions and determine what the instructions are. And if you can fish out what those transactions are and find one that can make a profit, or you can do the same thing Basically, you can just replace your address as part of that, simulate the transaction locally to make sure that it works, and then pay a higher gas cost in order to get included into a block before that person does, because most blockchains will have an incentive mechanism that allows you to do that. And the result will be that you will make money off this transaction, and the person that was trying to do the transaction will not make money off of it. Now, let's talk about the ethics of this particular strategy, because a lot of people absolutely hate front-running bots. You know, I don't particularly like them. I don't do front-running myself. But let's talk about what actually happens in this case. So, you know, a person who is trying to include their transaction into a block, you know, they're not going to be able to do that. They, they're prevented from doing this by the front runner. Now, what's the downside financial risk to this person? Well, essentially, they are going to lose out on the attempt at doing that, which is whatever gas fee that they use to try to make this uh, trade. And so this can provide a really bad user experience for people. And it's one of the main reasons that MEV has a bad name. So the next way that blockchain developers are making money with MEV is what's called sandwich trading, or you might have also heard this called a sandwich attack. So what is that? Well, it's called a sandwich attack because it involves three different transactions. The original transaction that the user intended to send to the blockchain, and then two transactions by the person performing the MEV. One that's ordered before the user's intended transaction and one after. So let's look at how that works. So let's say that the user was trying to go to a decentralized exchange like Uniswap to trade a token. Okay, let's say they want to swap Ether for DAI. All right, and they select DAI here and they say how much Ether they want to swap and it gives them the price for doing this. Okay, well, what's going to happen is once they submit that transaction to the blockchain, it's going to go into the mempool. And once it's in the mempool, someone can see that and then they can do a trade and order it right before that person's transaction. And what that's going to do, it's going to increase the cost of their swap, which means it's going to increase the slippage. Or they're going to get back less cryptocurrency than they intended from the trade initially. And then what the MEV bot can do is right after that, they can sequence a transaction to sell the cryptocurrency that they just bought for a profit. So they're making a little bit of money off this and the person who is selling uh, the cryptocurrency is getting less back than what they initially thought. Now, this is definitely a very controversial MEV technique because a lot of people just don't like it. It's a lot like front running, which I was talking about before. It basically includes front running, but then it also adds back running into the mix to do a sandwich attack. Basically, the end user doesn't get what they intend on the blockchain. And for this reason, I don't do this and I don't personally like it. All right, so those are the top ways that blockchain developers can make money with MEV. Now, some of these powers can be used for good and some of these can, powers can definitely be used for eh, maybe not so good. You let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Do you think MEV is bad? Are some of these techniques good or bad? What would you do? Let me know. And so if you want to get started on doing this type of thing, then you definitely need the skills in order to pull this off. So how can you do that? Well, first of all, smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. You're going to see lots more knowledge bombs just like this on the channel. And then next, 
You know, you can go to my YouTube homepage. There's lots of free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you want to take the next step or hey, maybe you want to pause the video and just go through the throat and learn real professional level skills, I can show you that step-by-step over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. Again, you don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.